Welcome to Dermatology Explained. Today's presentation is focused on cutaneous larva migraines. Cutaneous larva migraines is caused by the larvae of hookworms that infect domestic dogs and cats, typically. Although cutaneous larva migraines has a worldwide distribution, it is most commonly seen in warm climates, such as in the southeastern United States. Central and South America, Africa, and other tropical areas. It manifests as an erythematous, serpiginous, pruritic cutaneous eruption. The infection is usually acquired by walking barefoot on ground contaminated with animal feces, but the buttock and other body sites can become infected by a contact with contaminated soil or sand. Who is at risk of cutaneous larva migraines? It is essentially people whose hobbies or occupations put them in contact with contaminated soil. This includes barefoot walkers on the beach, sunbathers, children in sand pits, farmers, gardeners, plumbers, hunters, electricians, carpenters, and pest exterminators. In terms of the pathogenesis of cutaneous larva migraines, the larva enter the skin and belong a prolonged process of migration through the epidermis. With the rare exceptions, the parasite is confined to the epidermis and results in visible tracts and intense pruritus. Because the parasite lacks an enzyme called collagenase, which is needed to disrupt the basement membrane, it becomes trapped and travels in the epidermis. The image on the right-hand side demonstrates an example of one of these hookworms. The causative organisms include Ancyclostoma brasilensi, which is based in the United States, South America, and the Caribbean areas, and Cyclostoma caninum, which is from Australia, Uncinara stenocephala, which is based in Europe, and Bunostomum phlebotomum, which can be obtained from cattle. In terms of a basic overview of the life cycle of cutaneous larva migraines, it is a zoonotic infection with hookworm species that don't use humans as their definitive host. The mature hookworms reproduce in the small intestine of animals, and their eggs are passed through the animal host's stools. Under favorable conditions that include moisture, warmth, and shade, the larvae can hatch in one to two days. They release hatched rhabditiform larvae, which further develops in the soil environment, which then becomes infectious filariform larvae. It is this infective larvae that can survive up to three to four weeks in favorable environmental conditions. When humans infect the infectious Filariform larvae, it can then penetrate into the skin. And because it cannot further mature in a human host, it migrates aimlessly in the human skin epidermis and can travel several centimeters a day. In terms of the clinical features, patients who have cutaneous larvae migraines have intense localized pruritus or itchiness that begins shortly after the hookworm penetrates the skin. Several, later, several days later, the pruritus can develop small vesicles and one or more edematous serpiginous tracts. Serpiginous means the pattern is curvy in a snake-like formation. Each larva produces one tract and migrates at a rate of one to two centimeters per day, which is a creeping eruption. The most frequent location is the distal lower extremities or the buttock areas. Additional sites of involvement include the hands, thighs, and rarely the perianal area. In severe infections, hundreds of such lesions may be found on a single patient. If untreated, a single larval tract may progress, disappear for a few days, reappear, advance further, and so on for weeks or months. On average, Spontaneous resolution occurs after two to four weeks. Here are some further images demonstrating cutaneous larva migraines. 
from the Bologna Dermatology textbook. Note the characteristic serpiginous erythematous tracks on the lateral aspect of the foot, on both feet and on the shoulder areas. We can see here in these images demonstrate some secondary changes, including vesiculation and crusting, which are sometimes seen with cutaneous larva migrants. Unlike human hookworm disease and strongyloidiasis, the cutaneous larva migrans rarely progresses beyond the skin. In rare instances, there may be systemic manifestations, including migratory pulmonary infiltrates in the lung, as well as peripheral eosinophilia in the blood, which is known as Loeffler's syndrome. However, this is quite rarely seen. The most common systemic finding is a moderate peripheral blood eosinophilia. Due to intense pruritus and scratching, superimposed bacterial infections may complicate the clinical picture. Vesicles in bullae may develop in previously sensitized patients. The images on the right-hand side here demonstrate the pulmonary infiltrates in the lung, as well as cutaneous larva migrans features on the foot, which comprise of the Loeffler syndrome. The differential diagnosis of cutaneous larva migrans includes the following. Larva currents, however, these tend to spread faster at 5 to 15 centimeters per hour, migratory meiasis, other nematode hookworm infections, phytophotodermatitis, invertigo, and scabies. It is interesting to note that in the human species of intestinal hookworms, these penetrate the skin to cause a itchy, pruritic, non-specific localized rash, which lasts one to two weeks and is referred to as the ground itch. Unlike cutaneous larva migrans, these human forms of intestinal hookworms can progress to and systemic manifestations, including anemia, malnutrition, pulmonary, and gastrointestinal symptoms. In the human species, the autoinfection from larvae in the feces can occur, sometimes years after the initial infection. Although cutaneous larva migrans is a self-limited condition, the intense pruritus and prolonged course often necessitates further treatment. In terms of the treatment options available, one can use ivermectin as a single dose. This would be 12 milligrams in adults or 200 microgram per kilogram in children. This has a reported 80 to 100% efficacy. The oral form is helpful, but the topical form does not appear to be helpful. An alternative agent is albendazole, which can be used from three to five days at a dose 400 to 800 milligrams per day in adults or 10 to 15 milligrams per kilogram per day in children at a maximum of 800 milligram per day dose. There are reports of a topical therapy using 10 to 15 percent thiabendazole solution which when used three times a day for 15 days may have some efficacious results. And there are also reports of using cryotherapy for the leading edge of the clinical brush, which may help stop and prevent the spread of the hookworm further in the epidermis. Thank you for joining us today on this presentation. I hope you've learned something interesting about cutaneous larval migrants. I hope to see you at the next video presentation. Thank you.